Hey, hello and welcome. My name is Eric and I'm from Games for Hyper. And today I want to show you a technical overview video of the Outliner system. And with this video, I aim to show you the technical details of how it works on the inside. So we'll, we will be going over some code and I will try to explain uh, how the system is set up. So uh, you're able to understand it more easy, but also able to use it in your own game. I hope you like it. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and uh, leave a comment below or reach out via the Discord. So the first interesting thing about uh, how the outlining system works is that it works with a, a stencil value um, because eventually what it is using, it's using a uh, depth pulse and I can show you in the project settings here we have the custom depth stencil pulse um, I've enabled this one with stencil and if we are able I think we are able to show it with um, one of the settings and um, here it is uh, I need it uh, instead of uh, in the show, I need it to go to the lit one, the view modes, and there we can see the uh, buffer visualization and there we can uh, click on custom stencil. And here you can see uh, that it shows the different uh, things that I have enabled the custom stencil on. We are able to click on one of these actors, uh, in this case it's a static mesh actor, and if we go to search in the details panel of stencil, you can also see that it has a custom value. So if I'm going to set this to zero, you can now see it doesn't show it anymore because it does not have a custom stencil anymore. The zero means no custom stencil. When I press one, it does have it. So that is, this is the information that we are using to uh, show the outline because we want to um, pick that specific object and we want to outline uh, 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 that object itself. It is also good to know, uh, as you can see, I have one, three, and five used for the uh, primary, secondary, and the third color. Um, and the reason that I'm not using the uh, one, two, and three is because um, I want it to be separate from each other because eventually if I have this tree and want to show it before the uh, the one, um, it will uh, interlock fully and I do not want it. So I've made sure to, uh, to, uh, to put a step in between it. So how is it using these, uh, these tensor values? So basically, uh, what it does, it is being done via a post-processing. And the post-processing uses a material in which we define, okay, uh, which tensor value to use and which color to apply on that specific depth. So in this case, I uh, can search for the post-processing. Ah, uh, it's not assigned here, and I know why, because, um, I did make the post processing volume itself. Um, here it is. Um, what I did, I created an actor, and this specific actor, uh, when we open this one, we can see uh, that. Uh, on begin play. Oh, uh, it's not even on begin play. Just in the outline itself, I've created a post processing volume. In that post processing volume, I have um, assigned the material. So we can search for material itself, or we can, yeah, I think we're going to type it. Let's uh, type it here. Here you see. <laughs> One of the, 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 the properties in the post processing volume is the post process material. And I've assigned uh, the post processing material instance outliner scene depth. 
to this specific post-processing volume. Uh, it's good to know that this post-processing volume is uh, has an infinite extent, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have a specific bound. And what we do is uh, that world actor, uh, that one is being placed into the world. And you don't have to do that manually. Uh, you can, uh, just like this. However, you don't have to. Because eventually when you spawn as a player, I'm just I'm already checking is one uh, uh, one of these actors in the world available. If not, just spawn one. If there is one, don't spawn one. Um, so this outliner actor is always spawned in the world, and that's just to spawn this post-processing volume there. And what it has, it has this outliner scene depth material assigned. We can open this material instance. Uh, and this material instance is, of course, a child of parents. And the parent class is uh, my outliner master. However, I exposed uh, multiple variables into this instance, so you are able to change these colors quite easily. So if I am able to break it here, here you can see uh, the primary color is blue. I am able to uh, change it up easily like this. And what we also can do is change the outline width like so. Uh, I really don't like this. It's uh, uh, very sensitive and I uh, found out that the 0 0.75 uh, seems to be a nice value. Um, you can also see that I have a global uh, a switch and uh, to use a scene depth test. And in this case, it's true. So when this one is behind uh, uh, another ob object, uh, uh, it will uh, have uh, something of other depth. In this case, this white pillar in front of it. However, if we are not using it, um, it will just uh, search for the stencil value itself, just like we just previewed itself. So if we're going to say, okay, we are not going to use it, we are able to see the outlines through the walls, like so. I think it's better to keep this one default to true. Let's take a quick look to the outliner material itself. So this one is the material instant. This one has a parent and that one is the outliner master. And what I uh, did is I uh, used a function uh, uh, right here to, uh, to based on the, uh, the scene texture uh, and the screen position uh, to add a color uh, onto the depth. Um, uh, basically, that's a standard uh, method of uh, of, uh, of making sure uh, uh, to get the right stencil values. So now we know that the stencil values itself are crucial for um, uh, the input in the post-processing uh, material, and that's how it's being used. However, um, uh, uh, we would like to use this in our game. So in this case, I manually uh, clicked this actor here. I search in the details for the stencil value like this. However, um, uh, uh, when you are playing a game, you probably want to do these things dynamically. So let's do a quick test. Let's start at the current camera position like so. There, uh, when I'm approaching this specific button, this one is going to be outlined to the third one. So, um, how is that happening? Uh, uh, let's figure that out. So, let's figure out how that uh, interaction is happening and how it switches it on on, uh, on this specific actor. So, what uh, this trigger has is has a collision box and upon entering that collision box um, it is triggering 
a this specific example trigger and we can navigate through to the the word the actor and this is the target actor to trigger at the moment when uh, overlapping with the box uh, i'm not going to explain in detail how that interaction works uh, that is more for the interaction system itself just assume uh, that uh, uh, we can define which target to activate and in the target actor we will receive the interaction event and in this case the interaction event it's calling uh, to get an outline component in a, of the character zero um, normally i would say okay um, uh, from the owning controller so the player that is actually triggering uh, the interaction uh, get the outliner manager i've created this macro uh, however uh, just for simplicity i'm just getting it uh, from play, player index zero right now and getting the outliner abstract component and on this component i'm calling the server switch outline on actor function um, so that's how it is uh, triggering from this overlap to that actor and of course then the interesting thing is okay how does this function work let's dive into that before we are going to explain how that function works i think it's good to know how these components are being set up and also where the function is actually located and also implemented. So we can navigate to the outline system folder and in the outline system folder, we can find the blueprints folder. And in the blueprints folder here, we have our three actor components. That's where the HC stands for. Uh, <coughs> the actor components are in hierarchy of, uh, the abstract, basic, and then advanced. Um, and the abstract is only here to declare functions and also uh, declare uh, um, variables that are being used in all the child components, uh, but doesn't implement any function. Um, if you would like to more know more about, okay, why I'm using abstract components and uh, also how it's being used. Please open it up, go to the event graph, and here I have an explanation on how such a thing works. Because if you look at the events in a, such an abstract class, you will not see anything connected. Uh, but also if you open any of the functions on the left side, you see there's nothing happening. You might think, hey, what I'm missing, but well, that is a... Uh, a method of implementation in object-oriented programming. Um, I'm just declaring the things in an abstract and I am implementing them in any child. So for instance, when I'm opening the outline of basic, you can see I have implemented the same event as in the parent, that's the abstract, but here I connected it up. Uh, and also if you have any function, here I am connecting any function. The first thing I would like to show in the basic component is the begin play event. And the begin play event, the first thing what it does is, okay, I get all the outline world actors. That's the one that we uh, just discussed. Um, is there any in the world? And, and if there is not, uh, spawn such an actor uh, at the zero, zero, zero location because it doesn't matter because the box is infinite. However, this actor includes the post-processing uh, volume with the material signed, which determines the uh, stencil depth values of uh, the selected items. So I think it's finally time to check out the switch outline on actor function. Um, and when you call it, for instance, in this trigger, you will call uh, the, the event uh, uh, on the actor component uh, abstract itself. We just saw, okay, that abstract component is routing 
uh, um, the event through here. So this one is um, uh, derived from the parent of the abstract. And when this one is being called, it's going to execute this specific function. And this is the maybe the most important function of the system. Um, it has several inputs. The first input is actor to outline. So you can give up any actor in the world to say, hey, this is the uh, the one that we need. The, uh, the second one is outline behavior. Because um, you can determine, okay, uh, on which component that we can find within an actor, uh, which one should we outline? For instance, on all found primitive components, or only on the first one, or only ones with specific tags. Um, let's check it out. So here we have the example trigger. I'm able to open that one. And in the upper left corner, we see the static mesh. And the static mesh is uh, derived from the primitive component. But what if we have multiple primitive components? So I just copy paste it and I'm going to select another mesh, position it like so, file it, and now we would uh, be able to see uh, this Oculus controller also within the world. And I did implement that second static mesh on the trigger, and the trigger actor is being used in other actors as well. So you will see it in multiple. So when I press play, and I'm going to approach it, you see um, it is outlining both of the, the meshes that is being found in this actor. But let's try something else. Because in this trigger, in the event graph, we see the outline behavior is on all found primitive components. But what if we only do the first one? So we can try it again. And now that's the first one that's been found. So it's only showing up the first one. Um, but sometimes you might uh, uh, want to use tags. So uh, let's say on all found primitive components by tag. And if you don't know which tag to use, uh, you can always uh, enter this function and uh, just manually check which tag it's searching for. It's searching for the tag called outline. So now we know that. We go to the example trigger. Here we have the static mesh. Um, let's do the second one uh, only and tag outline like so. So when I press play, I expect uh, only the second mesh to be outlined. And that's correct. Um, and now I'm also going to add the tag to the first one, outline, so. And it will go both these. So now uh, you know what the outline behavior does. Uh, so it is on all found primitive components, only on the first one, all found with the tag, or only the first one that has actually the tag. Um, then we have uh, enable and disable the outline. Um, the reason why is because you're able to enable it and just Keep it enabled. However, uh, uh, sometimes you also want to disable it, uh, and you can. And the outline type is the one that is being uh, driven from the stencil value we just discussed. So here we have the primary, secondary, and the third one. And here we can select okay which uh, specific outline type. Do we need on uh, on this one? So if we check out the uh, event graph of the example trigger, I have created a variable called outline type and I exposed it uh, uh, publicly. Um, so that means that in editor, when 
right here. I will have an exposed variable called outline type, and I'm able to switch between the different outline types like so. So in this case, let's do primary, and now it will be the blue one. Ah, it is still uh, forcing it by tag, and I just removed the tags. So let's say on all found primitive components. Here we go. The example we just saw was via an overlap event. However, um, you also would like to dynamically switch outlines based on an action event, um, for instance, via the input of the player. So I've included an example to be able to press left mouse button. And when you press left mouse button, this trace will happen. And then the moment it hits that character, like so, and say, okay, toggle uh, 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 the outline. So switch it to enable if it was not enabled. And when I hit it again, like so, it will remove. This will also mean that I'm able to toggle things like so, and also disable it one command. So how does that work? Let me show you. So we have seen that by pressing the left mouse button, we are um, starting this line trace. Uh, and, and the left mouse button is by, done via an input event. And this input event is done in the character that we are currently controlling. So I'm going to the world settings of this specific map. I'm going to navigate to the default font class used, and there I see I'm using the, uh, the character for the outline assistant. I'm using the enhanced input system. So I am, uh, have created the input action primary action, which is assigned to the left mouse button. Um, this input action in this character itself here is just here as an example. Um, I have uh, made sure that all my primary actions, secondary actions in my pool systems are nicely uh, put into actor components. For instance, in the equipment manager to say, hey, if I have equipped this specific weapon, I'm able to execute um, uh, this specific uh, logic from this input action. But for testing purposes, I've made sure that we can press left mouse button in this actor of the outliner actor. Uh, and when it started, it's, it's going to do something. And what it's going to do is the first thing is I'm going to trace forward. And this is a trace forward uh, from the active camera. And um, this is a function I created myself uh, uh, in a blueprint function library. Uh, it's just a basic trace. I, I can show you quickly the line trace uh, from a certain position, and I'm returning the break hits results, and I'm starting from the player camera manager. Um, but I made this a pure function, so you can use it anywhere quite easily. I'm using the uh, player controller uh, in zero. I think I could also do uh, like get controller. Um, this would be more ready. Oh, this is a controller, so in this case, I need to pass it to a player controller. I can make that one a pure cost, like so. If I would do it like this, this would be more player ready. However, for testing purposes, this could also be fine. So, when uh, Click, uh, I see, okay, uh, I have a debug type for duration. That means that the, the red line that you just saw, uh, uh, that's being debugged so we can see it's being tracing. And if that's hitting something, then we are going to do something. I can add a breakpoint right here, file it. Now we can uh, see what's happening. So when I press the left mouse button, say, hey, did I hit something? Uh, no, what actually did I hit? Uh, no. Uh, but what if I hit that specific actor? 
Mist. Yes. So now I hit it something with race and what am I am I hitting? I am hitting this big skeleton mesh actually. So that's nice. So we now know that this trace is working and it's also uh, returning the values that we would like. So after we have hit it something, um, I'm doing a check. And in this case, I say, hey, does the actor that we hit, does it has the tag outline? And only if that's true, then we can continue. So uh, I'm going to check that. I know it's true, but I'm just going to show you. It says, hey, this actor has two tags. It has a tag outline and also a tag symbol. Um, you could, of course, just ignore uh, uh, these tag requirements. However, um, I liked uh, to implement it like this so you specifically can control which out, uh, actors you are capable of outlining and which you are not. It's OK. Uh, we know now that's true, so this is going to return true. And if that's true, then I'm calling the event, uh, the function, switch outline on actor. And that's the function that we just discussed. And uh, it has an input actor to outline. Uh, and that's the actor that is being returned from the, from the trace result. Uh, uh, and I am enabling it if. The actor uh, at that moment has not an outliner active. And this is also a function that I created in the outliner component. So you can check, okay, is the actor that we're currently dealing with, in this case, the hit actor uh, uh, return value, does it have an outliner active? Yes or no. And if that's true or not, you can do multiple things. Um, I think that can become quite handy in multiple implementations. Um, but how are we getting access to that specific function? Because we discussed that that specific function is implemented in the outliner uh, component itself. We are currently in the character itself. And in this character itself, I have assigned the outliner component. Uh, because I uh, signed the capability of outline things and uh, disable outlines on this specific character. Because you as a player uh, want to control um, uh, uh, these functions. Um, so because it is directly here, I'm able to drag it in this event graph. And here I have access to all the functions that are implemented in um, the outliner component, such as the switch outline on actor, but also the check uh, if actor is outliner or check if actor is symbol attached, etc., etc. Um, sometimes you are not currently in this specific character right here, uh, but still you would like to uh, get access to the outline component. For instance, um, maybe you only have like get the owner, something like this. And uh, this owner is referencing a specific character. However, uh, that owner uh, could be, uh, uh, if, if it has an outline component, you would like to now, hey, does it has that outline component itself? But you can do, uh, I think, this. get components class. No, it is get components by class. You can use this one. Here you can type an outline and specifically use always the abstract. Um, and does a specific actor has uh, uh, the, the outliner component assigned. And if that's true, then we can use the functions on that specific outliner component. So that's how you would use um, um, the outline component. You can always get it by checking, hey, does it has uh, the component? 
So now we have the component here in this character itself. We are drag and dropping this into uh, this event graph. And there we are executing the specific functions to eventually switch the outline on the actor. So if I'm disable everything behind that, we already know that this will work. And we will execute the enable uh, and disable. Um, as a bonus, um, I've also created a symbol system. Why not? Um, and I also require, uh, hey, does it has a tag uh, symbol? Uh, we just checked it does have the tag symbol. And if that's the case, certainly check does it already has a symbol attached? Uh, if so, uh, destroy the symbol actor. If it doesn't have a symbol, spawn the symbol. And the spawn location um, uh, could be a relative, in this case, to the parent actor. So it's attaching it to the specific parent actor. And I'm pushing it up uh, relatively uh, about 200 units. So when this is connected, I am able to outline it, and you will see that symbol is now working. It is good to know that a symbol that's being spawned, that is an, an actor that's being spawned in the world with a static mesh site, which has uh, some animations in it, uh, we can uh, switch the symbol mesh dynamically quite easily, the editor help symbol. Now you can see it has switched to the editor help symbol. Um, but because we are spawning uh, a specific actor, um, we also need to destroy it uh, completely. And I've created the function destroy symbol by actor specifically uh, for this uh, uh, symbol logic. The only thing that this function needs is, okay, uh, which uh, actor do I need to destroy? Which symbol actor? I have showed you uh, earlier that we can toggle scene depth. And the scene depth is a function that I created within the material itself. However, I also made sure that I created a function in the extra component of the outliner to make sure to toggle scene depth on uh, 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 um, on this specific uh, outline. So what we can see here is when we overlap this one, the scene depth is triggered. And how is that happening? So here uh, I have this uh, interaction uh, um, stand again on overlap it's going to activate something i'm going to navigate okay, what is going to activate and it's going to activate the example in depth blueprint what i did i created a dummy uh, component it's just an empty component right here which um, on interact it's going to get uh, uh, the outliner component Player character index zero. You can also choose to use the outline component of the controller of the, the one that's being interacting with. And if that is um, interacted with, it's going to toggle uh, on and off that using scene um in the uh, outliner abstract. And what that function is going to do, it's going to find the uh, post processor volume that we have in the world and the post-processing volume is the material assigned uh, which dynamically is able to switch okay i'm going to turn off a uh, toggle scene depth and turning it on last but not least is the sprites um couple i got a couple of questions hey can i use this system on a sprite and i try to make sure that it does. And the steps that you need to take to make it work on a sprite is, is described here. You need to do three steps. First of all, 
you need to make an actor uh, itself. Uh, and the actor could include the, the sprite uh, uh, in, the, in the scene outlier itself. Second thing is when uh, this sprite is assigned here, I'm able to change the custom depth stance of it. If I edit uh, just a sprite in the world, I'm not able to change the stance of it. So that's the reason why I've put it in an actor before. And if that is the case, um, then also the sprite material uh, needs to be able to accept the render path. Um, and that is in the lit sprite materials. I can show you how. When you click on a specific sprite, it is always using a specific sprite material. By default, it's not using the default lit sprite material. I've changed it to that specific material. The reason why is because it is uh, accepting uh, this specific render pass uh, of the custom depth stencil. So only if you have done these three steps, yeah, uh, the outline will work on the sprite. And now we are also able to change these tensor values. Just like so. And of course, we can also use this dynamically by uh, uh, any event, for instance, via an input event of the mouse or an overlap event or whatever you like. As long as you have access to the outliner component itself, you can make sure to execute any function on it. Okay. I think this describes the outliner system well in technical detail. Uh, of course, I've not gone over everything. However, um, I hope that with the explanation of how such a system is being set up. This helps you to grasp, okay, how does it work, but also how can I use it in my own system? If you have any question or I missed something important uh, which you would like to have any elaboration on, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, leave it in the comments below or reach out to Discord and I will see what I can do for you. I hope you have a nice day uh, and thank you for watching. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, I hope you liked it. So please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime, for instance, via Discord or Patreon. And don't forget to check out one of the videos that I will be posting somewhere here. And of course, I hope you have a very nice day. Bye.